Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Nelson from Signpost, and I'm really excited to have our friend and my friend, Liz Calcidia from Business 411 here today. So we are really passionate about helping contractors become successful in every aspect of their business. We help contractors of all sizes, especially for those who are looking for ways to intentionally grow their businesses, maybe from a small family run business uh, to one that has teams of employees, multiple locations, et cetera. We've collaborated with Liz on a number of things over the years, but we're really excited today to talk about this really important topic of scaling your business. Um, I wanna just start out though with uh, Quick getting to know you, Liz, um, talk about your agency and where you are today with your team. Yeah. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Laura, for having me here. I absolutely love Signpost, uh, the product with everything you guys do and the team itself. So uh, it's a privilege to be talking here with you guys. So, uh, obviously, you have so many tools and resources for contractors. So um, yeah, so a little bit about Business 411. I've been in the roofing industry for over six years now, uh, going on my seventh one soon here. And I just uh, have gone to know so many contractors, how they run their business through actually back then I did measuring, estimating and helping them uh, get their sales presentation set up and you know simulate how they were gonna show the new roof system with my previous company and um, 2019, we, I quit my job and I was like, I need to create a solution to help more people. I feel so many people are stuck in their old ways and, you know, it would be awesome to be able to provide them solutions to help them grow. So I started off business 411, um, back in July, 2019. And, uh, now it's, we're coming up on our two year anniversary. Thank God we've gone this far. Um, we're all over the U.S. right now. We work with over 350 roofers all over the country, helping them, you know, target each of their ideal clients, grow their business, sustain it and scale it because it's not just about scaling. It's also about sustaining it. That's awesome. That's incredible growth for, for two years. So really hats off to you for leading the charge there. Um, how big is your team these days? Uh, we have 11 employees now. That's awesome. And you are, you're based in Florida, but as you said, contractors all across the country work with you. Yeah. So, so we actually don't have many contractors in our local market um, because we just, we, we have more, literally everyone all over the country. We wanted to have, you know, different markets. Tile's very different as well. We do have some clients in Northern Florida. So we're kind of saving this spot down here because one of our clients is opening up a branch here and uh, we're just waiting on them to expand. Oh, awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, speaking of expansion, like that is our major topic for today. And we're going to look at this um, idea of scaling, particularly from the 1 million to 5 million revenue mark um, through the marketing lens. Um, we know that marketing is only one part of the business plan, but it's so important in determining a growth strategy. And really excited to have you on here because you have so much expertise in this area, you know, through your experience with technology and founding and growing an agency. So I have a set of questions here, but really want this to be a, a nice dialogue and um, highlighting some of your experiences there and um, sharing some examples with, with contractors um, that you've seen along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So first of all, I'm curious, uh, what is the turning point, right? Like when do contractors usually turn to you to expedite their growth processes? And um, when do they really wanna be intentional and start incorporating those changes that will allow them to grow? Yeah. So I would say the biggest uh, time where people reach out to me is when they plateau. Mm -hmm. um, when they, they don't see any changes, there's no improvements in the business and they just feel stuck. Um, so that's when people reach out to me, the moment of feeling stuck, they don't know what to do next. Um, or the second point would be when they're just pumped. 
they're ready for massive success and they're taking action and they're just doing everything every single second of the day and they're working with like 25 people to like figure out what they're going to do to grow the business so um but the biggest one would be the the plateau I think uh, every single business hits that stagnation point and you have to do something to shake things up Mm -hmm. and knowing what to do is just as important um, as taking action, taking the right action. Got it. Got it. So yeah, let's talk about that plateau. And I'm particularly interested in this like 1 million mark. Mm -hmm. Right. So what are some of the typical marketing activities that business owners might be doing at that mark? And then why do they need to make changes from this, you know, 1 million in revenue? Yeah. So we live in a, um, we work in a very, very interesting industry. It's easy to make a million dollars in roofing. Um, It's not, I'm not going to say it's like a piece of cake, but it's a lot easier than pretty much any other industry. Um, especially those who are in store markets. So um, the biggest thing that people are doing at a million mark, it's usually, you know, they have one, either they're the sales rep or they have one sales rep and they're kind of working the back office. Um, And what the best action for someone who's at that million dollar mark to take at that point is going to be to increase their revenue, right? So increasing your revenue is done through two ways, increase your sales or increase your price right? Um, And I like to uh, use a combination of both, right? I want you to increase your price so that you and deliver more value to your customer, but also increase your sales. And um, so increasing your sales through your marketing, in order to increase sales, you need a steady flow of new leads coming in every single day. How do you get more leads? That's going to be the question that every single person and that owns a business asks themselves, right? So getting more leads when it comes to the roofing industry is starts with your brand. If you have a memorable brand, it's going to be a lot cheaper to get you leads than if you look like anotherroofer.com. You know, anotherroofer.com, it's hard to make a chuck in the truck stand out and be memorable i need a good solid brand to get leads for because online even if you're a roofing company you have to look like you're modern like you're with the times so it starts off with that branding um making sure they're investing into their website and their google um google is going to be the biggest point and that's usually when they when they start like when someone on the other end is like i need help with my website and google that means they want to make, they want to break that 1 million mark. They're like, okay, let's go. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm glad you bring that up because, you know, we see a lot of chatter, especially online in the groups that we're in um, of rubers just saying like, Hey, I need more leads. And some of them kind of just like race to the bottom and mm-hmm. buy leads from a source without thinking about the fundamentals mm-hmm. that they need to change to scale. I'm glad you mentioned brand as well, because that is one of those key fundamentals that, you know, if you don't fix at this point in your business growth, uh, you know, you're not going to develop a sustainable business and you're not going to be memorable, Mm -hmm. your point as well. I'm curious to know from you also, like what else needs to change, right? So business hits that 1 million plateau. And you know, they, they start to craft their brand. They start to work with someone like you to make it memorable. Because I know you guys do logos. You do fantastic websites. You make sure they're mobile friendly. They're modern. They're appealing to homeowners. They show off the great work of contractors. Um, yet that's only where things begin, right? Mm-hmm. Like there are other things they need to do to stand out on Google, for example. Um, what are some examples of those things that need to change to start to elevate that business to the next level? Yeah, so there's going to be a couple of changes that happen. One is in the owner, two is in the company, and three is with the customers. So first, with the business owner is starting to feel like a business owner, right? Um, a lot of companies struggle for many, many years and don't grow past a certain level and stay stuck in that plateau because the owner hasn't made the shift yet to think, hey, I am a business owner, not just 
uh, you know, a roofing company, and I'm a salesperson. I'm not just doing one single action. I'm a business owner. And once the owner makes that shift and decides, hey, I'm going to make this thing work and it's going to be the biggest company in the area, uh, that's the turning point because then he'll go right into shifting the company, um, growing their online resources, investing more into their Facebook, their Google, their website. Um, he'll look more into investing uh, into hiring more people, back office support, actively trying to get more salespeople in the door. Um, salespeople are an amazing tool to use to grow your business. If you want to grow your business, get more salespeople, get them qualified leads uh, through your through your brand. And then lastly would be with the customers, right? With volume comes a lot of different issues on the customer end. So one thing that I like about Signpost is you can use it to keep your customers updated. You can use email marketing solutions that not only make you different from everyone else, but also keep the communication clear. So um, that's just a couple of the things that change along the way. Um, as long as you're keeping the communication up, that's what really matters. Even for myself, I, I grew my business crazy in one year. Communication was is the top thing that helps us keep our clients satisfied. If there's ever like one delay in communication, you can already see the customer experience going down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that experience is crucial and developing that mindset around making it uh, exceptional for today's consumer who is a lot more demanding and expects a lot more immediacy than maybe prior generations. Um, you know, if they miss the boat on that, they miss a, an opportunity to make money. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, like you mentioned, um, you know, lead gen and some programs, right? Um, you know, hiring salespeople maybe even getting out and door knocking, we know that's very popular, especially in storm markets. I'm curious what you recommend for contractors in terms of their lead mix, like their marketing investment mix, if they're going from one to 5 million, like what should they be aiming for in terms of like, not just like how much money to spend where, but like what, what fraction of money to spend generating different types of leads for a sales team to call out on? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, to as far as once you're at that 1 million mark where you should invest your marketing dollars, uh, it's going to be to number one, build your SEO. Um, so building that organic traffic to your site long term and SEO is a long term investment because you're going to continue continuously have to build higher rankings with different keywords. So understanding exactly what kind of jobs you want to get. Okay, am I going to get repairs do i want to become the roof repair king in my area um because that's going to get you more replacements anyways so using uh, keywords like roofing repair in xyz city uh roofing replacement in xyz city uh residential roofer in xyz city home roofer like there's so many different mix commercial roofing contractor roofing contractors near me those are the types of words that you want to build into your site so making sure that immediately you're starting to do that because that's going to pay off in the long run, right? And then things that are going to give you that immediate gratification because, uh, you know, SEO is that delayed gratification. The immediate gratification is going to be your PPC ads. Um, Facebook does take a little bit to build out as well. You can get lucky and start getting leads right away, but you need to build that brand on Facebook. You need to build more awareness uh, to be able to get people's attention and then convert. So starting to post on your Facebook actively so that when you do run ads, people have something to reference to. The pages that run ads and have no content on their business page are less successful because when the customer clicks on the page, there's nothing there. Um, so it's like, what, what is the customer going to look at? And uh, lastly, but definitely not the least, is always going to be Google. Well, when it comes to a company is absolutely key for you to grow your company um, with Google. What you want to do is you want to look at the three types of getting on Google. There's Google guarantee. Uh, there's Google ads and Google my business. The main thing that everything stems from the home base is Google my business. And what is what is made up? What is Google my business made out of? 
reviews, hours of operations, products and services, um, photos, postings. You can do your frequently asked questions. There's tremendous value by having your Google My Business properly filled out and having reviews. You want to make sure you have a high review rating. Um, you may want to make sure you're responding to those reviews. Um, honestly, when you're building your business, if you're not collecting reviews at every single point, I am always asking people for reviews. We use signposts as well. So we're always trying to proactively get reviews because the better your online reputation is, the easier it is to build out and invest into your marketing. So, um, okay, so you've built out your Google My Business. Everything looks good. You have everything properly. You have good reviews, your products, you have photos, you have articles in there. The next part is going to be filling out your Google Guaranteed form. Um, so Google Guaranteed is a service that you actually get, you pay per lead, basically is Google's lead gen. And then there's Google Ads. Google Ads, I typically recommend using an agency for it and not trying to do it yourself because learning how to use Google Ads is a completely different animal and it changes every single day. The analytics change every single day. Um, but as a business owner, whatever company you're working with, you're going to want to make sure they have your tag managers and analytics and your Facebook pixels all tied in so that you can track what is happening on your website and who's going to be uh, actually visiting that site long term. So I know that's a lot. <laughs> No, that's huge. And I think, you know, Google is, you cannot overlook that as a contractor, especially if you're trying to scale. Um, you know, these, these are fundamentals. And I think your point about hiring an agency is well taken because like the ramp up to learning all of the technical ins and outs of Google is, you know, it's long and it can be really expensive for contractors too. And the advantage they get with an agency like yours is that um, you can leverage all of the learnings that you've had you know, across the industry and across markets to um, shorten that um, learning cycle and be more effective right out the gate. But you also talked about content. So I wanna circle back to that. You mentioned articles is just an example. Certainly testimonials, reviews are a big part of content. But there is a whole nother world of content as well. And contractors are, are sometimes at a loss for what they should be talking about and creating. Um, so can you talk about what types of content contractors should think about um, to make these touch points with their customers or with their prospects more interesting? Yeah, so um, everyone kind of does the same thing where they post a video on a roof and they're like, hey, my name's John on this roof, like I'm here. And um, that's necessarily not appealing to a homeowner and it isn't going to uh, stop the scroll, right? So what type of content you want to make? Stuff that's going to stop the scroll. Now that requires thinking outside the box. And it's worth sitting down and actually brainstorming a couple of ideas of what might be catchy to a homeowner in your area. So I always say become a resource for your local community and you'll get all the attention you want. Um, that's what we've done at Business 411. We've become a resource for roofing contractors and now we have plenty of business uh, to continue to grow. So you want to become that resource for your community. If you're a uh, business owner, like for example, if I was serving the Miami area, I would make things about Miami. So I would, uh, or let's use a less fun city because I mean, <laughs> Miami, like I can make content about all day. Um, let's use, uh, for example, where I'm from, Raleigh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So if I was making content for Raleigh, North Carolina, I would talk about new restaurants, new cities, uh, tips for people who own a home, what they should be doing, what should they what should they be preparing for? What are things that are happening in my area? Am I getting involved with local charities? Am I supporting veterans? Am I supporting um, the law enforcement? And what am I doing during this COVID time? Am I highlighting the people that work on my team? So um, I think that roofers put themselves in this box with this is what a roofing company is supposed to post that they forget that people are on social media to enjoy their time and have fun. 
So you should build content that is for people who want to have fun and enjoy themselves. Um, now, with someone like myself, I need to build educational content because I'm targeting business owners. You're targeting a homeowner who just got off work at five o'clock and they're just like on their Facebook scrolling. You know, do you think that the one thing they're going to stop for is John on a roof? No, they're going to stop to see John uh, the roofer talking about things that are happening in their area. They're, they'll stop to look at John the roofer do like um, those so satisfying videos, you know, people love the satisfying videos. It puts our brain at ease and it releases endorphins. So that's what you want with the type of content you want to make, because that's what marketing is. Marketing is not just selling yourself. That's not, that's not what it's about. It's uh, engaging your community and the sales will come. Yeah. I, I like that. How you put that in terms of stopping this scroll and encouraging contractors to think about, you know, their own use of platforms like Facebook. What makes us stop scrolling? It is something unexpected, like a roofer doing good in the community. I especially love this idea in the in this low season because contractors are constantly asking you and I, like, hey, it's November. <laughs> That's the season, you know, it's not summer, we can't be on the roofs all the time. You know, yeah. what can we be doing to build goodwill to build a pipeline in our community you know hey these holidays are right around the corner this is a great time to get involved and you know buy turkeys for the less fortunate do work in your community um it's so cheap and easy to document this you know on iphones and you know make a real splash about your company doing good yeah. So one thing I wanted to add there too, is that becomes part of your story. So mm -hmm. telling a story online is what you're trying to accomplish. And being a roofing company that tells a story is extremely valuable. It's not easy to tell a story sometimes as a business, but believe me, people are watching. They're watching companies grow in their area. They're talking to each other about it. Um, I hear it all the time with my friends about local companies and we're out and about, hey, look at this company. They just opened up another location here, here, here. So there's always things to do to tell your story, build that story, and people want to hear about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And they want to support businesses that they believe in mm -hmm. and, you know, owners, managers, teams that are doing good in their community as well. Like they will get behind that. Um, I want to switch gears. Like we talked a lot about lead gen, building your story, building your brand, et cetera. But I think the next really important step, especially as we build out this experience for homeowners is um, managing leads, mm -hmm. right? This is where some contractors really fall down. They yeah. make a ton of leads, but they don't really have a process in place to manage leads and get the most that they can out of all of these investments that they're making, right? Yeah. So talk about what that means for a contractor going from 1 million to 5 million, you know, as yeah. we're talking about in this conversation, how should they manage that lead process? Yeah, I love this question. Um, I'm the follow-up queen. I've followed up with someone for four years. Um, <laughs> So I'm a strong believer in following up with people and keeping the conversation going as much as possible. Um, so when someone, when so you put so much effort into getting a lead online, right? And then you called them and they didn't answer. You called them again, they didn't answer. And then there went, there went the, the potential customer. Well, you need to have a system set up in, pay, in place that c combines call, text, and email to make sure that you're actually gonna follow up with that person long-term. What happens to all of us? We're, this is what a consumer is doing. So I'll just explain what a homeowner does to find a roofer. Um, so the homeowner is the evening time, let's say, I just noticed the leak in my house. Um, my, I'm awkward to the husband. My wife is like, hey, we need to call a roofer. We have a leak, blah, blah. I'm stressed, I've had a long day. I'm going on Google, I'm calling random companies this guy didn't answer left him a voice and I'll go call another one um so I'm calling calling people let's say no one answered their phone because it's 8 p.m and they all have lives too 
right? And that's a tip for everyone out there, for any professional who really wants to grow your business, have an answering service that answers at all times. Mm -hmm. The last thing you want to do is miss a call. Missing a call can be detrimental to your business. I, I, you know, didn't practice what I preach uh, for a second there. And it cost me a couple of really big deals because I did not answer. I didn't have an after hours phone service. Mm -hmm. So, but, and I've been advising people to do this for years. So, you know, it's the typical story anyway. So, um, when you have someone, when you're answering the phone after hours, this allows you to always have availability and always accept new leads. Right. So that's going to be the first, uh, point that you need to address. Now it's going to happen. What happens with the follow-up process? What happens when you have that lead? Okay, if they didn't answer the first time, you should at least maintain seven points of contact over a 30-day period. And mm -hmm. that's a minimum. That's a minimum. If you're not even doing that, then it, there's not much I can help you with because if you're not willing to call, text, or email a customer seven times that, to get to earn their business and show them that you're interested in helping them, um, then, you know, it you're just basically wasting your money on your advertisements because it's all in that rehashing the same things for when you, you actually went and gave them the estimate and they didn't make a decision immediately follow up with them and you have to kind of pace it out to the homeowner specifically once you know them you're going to be like okay this person's one of these people that's going to take them three months to make a decision because they're so busy and running around <laughs> and you have to be ready for when this busy person decides three months okay i'm ready to go Got it. Yeah, I think actually seven is probably low when we look at the stats of how many yeah. touch points it takes to actually close a deal. But yeah, I mean, seven is a minimum that contractors can feasibly reach across all of those tools that mm -hmm. you mentioned. And an important piece of that too is automation. Like you mentioned timing, automation is going to ensure that these tasks get done. Mm -hmm. over time and take like the human element out of it. You know, obviously if phone is involved, you've got to have your salespeople calling at a regular cadence, but automation technology can help fill in the gaps and call centers. That's huge, mm -hmm. right? If you don't have people answering the phone, you know, when homeowners have the time to make these decisions, you are missing out on business. Mm -hmm. So you put it very well never miss a phone call here at signpost we say never miss a lead however it may come in on the phone on chat etc um, super critical to at least provide an opportunity to capture that information and then implement a process to follow up systematically and ensure that you give yourself the best opportunity to close that business yeah absolutely um i would to I'll i totally agree with you the automation aspect to any business can help you significantly improve all aspects. And your salespeople are human too. Just having your reminder pop up, hey, follow up with this customer for them automatically allows you as the business owner to set the standard of what you're going to accept from your team. So set that standard for how you want your sales reps to perform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We've talked about a lot of things today, lead gen, marketing content, this lead development or lead capture process. There's a lot of things to take into consideration to make this leap you know, mm -hmm. when scaling your business and creating a successful growth plan. So how do contractors get started? Yeah, so with, with us, the approach that I typically uh, do is I start off with where they're at to date. Let's mm -hmm. put on pen and paper. What do you have going on so we can accomplish what you're trying to do long term? But let's be realistic. Financially, team wise, operational, customer resources, what do you have right now? Right. Start with what you got. And then from there, draw out what you want. What do you want? What do you want? Like you ask people, I ask people all the time. Well, I want my business to grow. Okay, how do you want your business to grow? What is the amount of money that you would like your business to make in a year? And then from there, we break it down backwards. If you want to grow to a $5 million a year company, and I'll do some quick math now to show you guys exactly what I do in our intro session. So let's take the $5 million a year number, right? Let's say my average ticket 
for a roof is going to be, let's say I'm in a North Carolina and I'm, I'm selling simple shingle roofs, $10,000 average ticket, right? Um, sorry, I'm just <laughs> put it in incorrectly. So that's 500 roofs. So you have 500 roofs, you have 12 months in a year, but let's say I'm seasonal and I only have really nine months of being active and three months there might be snow. So 500 divided by nine, those are my gonna be my working months for the year. So that's 55.5. So 56 roofs a month during my active season is what I have to sell. So now let's break it down even further. There's four weeks in each month, that's 13.8. So 14 roofs a week. And that's gonna put me, let's say we only work five days a week to give people a weekend. Yeah. 2.7 roofs a day. Mm -hmm. so three roofs a day is all you need to get to 5 million um, during a nine month period. Now, some of us have longer, uh, you know, seasons and some have shorter. So you just have to adjust it based off of what your working months are. But now I'm going to show you the marketing math. Mm -hmm. So three roofs a day. Let's say I'm an average roofer and I close at a 50% rate. That means I need to generate six leads a day. So six leads a day, five days a week is 30 times four is going to put you 120. So 120 times nine months means you need a thousand leads. Mm -hmm. A thousand leads can change your life. And if you divide that into door knocking, Google, um, Facebook, brochures, handing out flyers, getting involved in your community. A thousand leads is an attainable goal. If you can get a thousand leads, you can change your life. And those are just knowing the numbers is an important thing because it makes it more realistic. If you can't talk to a thousand people in a year to try to earn their business, then what can you do? You know, how much energy are you willing to put forth to grow your company and reach that goal? thousand leads can change your life. I love it. Um, I know that you do a pretty in-depth consultation when you first meet with contractors. If a viewer of this conversation is interested, how can they get in touch with you, Liz? Yeah, so you can visit our website, business411.com. Um, we also have our Facebook page is Business411. You can always look us up on Facebook. Our phone number is 1-844-4-BIZ-411. And we're the Business Information Center. We do free consultations for any contractor, any business owner who wants to know how what they need to do next. That's a free service that I provide. I'm working on incorporating more free services because I believe everyone should have information like this at their disposal without having to pay a lot of money. So I'm willing to share anything that I can to help someone who's on the path to grow their business. That's awesome. And I highly encourage everyone to take advantage of that. I think it's really important that it is, it's personalized to your business and your online presence and your opportunity to generate more leads and ultimately more business too. Um, our team at Signpost is always help, happy to help you build a customer communications program as part of this overall big picture to help you get the lead, get the job, and then get the review. Hey. <laughs> Additionally, we have some free downloadable resources for you to grow your business. Um, the links are below in the video description. Um, be sure to hit the subscribe button in YouTube to get notifications about the next Contractors Corner release. And any parting thoughts, Liz, for viewers and, and what they should know and take away from today's talk? Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing to remember is that working hard out in the field all day is great, but the way that you're going to change your business is to actually take a step back and figure out what's the big picture what's your big vision and work on creating that for yourself so don't get stuck in the day-to-day -day. shake things up for yourself get uncomfortable and if you feel too comfortable get around someone who's doing better than you that's always going to humble you 
Um, I try to do that every single day. I try to meet someone more successful than me that has nicer things than I do that's in a step above life so that I can uh, grasp that energy and bring it into my own life. Well, that's awesome advice and um, well taken. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for being on Contractors Corner. Um, thank you guys for watching and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks.